One of the issues that's very prevalent in the UFO community is the conspiracy issue. Granted, government does not release all information, but I also know from my own experience in the military that the government can't keep secrets very well. Uh, ultimately, the stuff leaks out. Uh, maybe not the documents, but ultimately it does leak out. Uh, and, and to this date, there's been no real smoking gun that's come out of the information that has been released or that's been supposedly overheard by people that that, that would uh, dispel my beliefs that it's anything but a misinterpreted event. It took me five years to get a uh, one of the important CIA UFO documents. Uh, I want to show that to you so you'll see how much we learned from those documents. Uh, yeah, there's five years to get that. <laughs> Well, it's got a lot of information. It says title, doc reference, info date, string of numbers, USSR, and more numbers, and that's it. <laughs> They're not holding back anything. Now, how could you accuse the government of keeping a secret from us? Stan is uh, famous for flipping the blacked out pages and said, you know, what's going on here? Well, we now know that the reason they covered that up was not because there was UFO, UFO information in it, but be, because there was um, critical source information in it. The Soviets may determine, based on some of the stuff released in that report, where the information was gathered and it could uh, adversely affect the person who helped in the gathering of the information. I don't know how much of this is a, is a consequence of frustration after years and years and years of trying to to tease out uh, the answers for the data in hand and how much of it is um, uh, a genuine belief that if we crack this cover up we're going to have all the answers so let's not waste any more time poking around with the data and, and doing all that rather boring hard work. Um, I just, uh, that I don't know. I, it's, I suppose in some ways it's, it's also more exciting if you're thinking in terms of cover-up. You know, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a kind of, um, you know, James Bondish, uh, X-File-ish X kind of aspect to it that makes it more fun. I met somebody once who let me in on a little secret. He had worked at the White House. He was a professional person, and he had access to all kinds of stuff which he saw about flying saucers. And he told me, you know, they kill people for leaking stuff like that. And I believe him. But I, I can't live my life worrying about what the government's going to do and looking over my shoulder. I have made seven trips in the last three years to Roswell. It's a 200-mile drive from Albuquerque to Roswell. And there's nobody there. Lots of nothing in New Mexico. And I give out my itinerary, I tell my answering service, tell people where I am and where I'll be going and all this kind of stuff. If anybody wanted to take me out, I had ample opportunity. If you're thinking in terms of government cover-up and conspiracy and intimidation of witnesses and all of that, that tends to validate your own importance, too, because they care about what we're doing. Um, if, they're, if, if you don't have that kind of attention from them, uh, then who are you but just another bunch of uh, folks that are interested in something that's slightly off the wall. Now these guys got a sense of humor. This page says deny in toto. <laughs> they couldn't find eight lousy words to declassify. Of course there's a cosmic water gate. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's no case that better illustrates that than the Roswell case. I knew that was important when I began the civilian investigation of it back in the 70s. I had no idea how important I do now. When you've got evidence that the government recovered not only a crash flying saucer or two, but alien bodies, and they set up an outstanding group of people to deal with that information, and have kept it secret all these years. That's definitely a cosmic water gate. Roswell is important because it defines ufology both when it was first first happened in 1947, but also the rediscovery. It tells us a great deal about 
the hidden nature of the UFO phenomenon and why it has been buried for so long. Once we understand Roswell, once we understand what happened at Roswell, we understand why ufology developed the direction it developed for the next 50 or 60 years. We understand what is going on. We understand that there was a necessity for hiding a great deal of UFO information. And it, if Roswell had not happened in 1947, the whole history of ufology would have been different. Stan Friedman uh, has devoted much of his life uh, to attempting to establish a factual basis, an evidential basis, uh, for uh, accepting uh, his view of what happened in 1947. He was the first, really, uh, beginning in 1978, to uh, interview uh, Jesse Marcel uh, in a systematic uh, way. He was the premier pioneer uh, in uh, constructing the Roswell myth. And in doing so, he has become very comfortable in a certain vocabulary, uh, in a certain way of talking about things, uh, in a certain assurance uh, about the sources uh, and the like, so that uh, he feels uh, that uh, his worldview, his, his particular point of view with respect to Roswell uh, is, is true. The, the poster on the wall in Fox Mulder's office that says, I want to believe, is, uh, is a, uh, a representation of what happens to be the very real thing in ufology. People want very much for these, for, to believe whatever it is that happens to be their, uh, their interest, aliens visitation, uh, uh, abductions, etc. And unfortunately what happens is, is that this leads them to ignore facts that are inconvenient, that is facts which are uh, contrary to the things that they want to believe. Roswell is, is replete with this.